Well, there are many things I like about sci-fi. Um, one of the things I really like about sci-fi is that it's a literature of ideas, as critics such as Cheryl Vint has once said. And what she means by that is that sci-fi provides us with various interpretive frameworks from which we can assess and reevaluate and make sense of very difficult questions or contentious questions about ourselves, about uh, our history, about our culture, society, politics. And sci-fi asks, or rather invites us to ask a very important question, and that question is, what if? From a literary point of view, or f yeah, uh, the black hole for me represents this space, this dark mass in outer space that's defined by its incredible gravitational pull uh, that can one day suck up the Earth if it came <laughs> close enough to the Earth. So it's a really frightening and scary thing for me, the black hole. But I think what sci-fi and what fiction allows us to do is to cope with this fear. Um, it might even provide us with imaginary solutions to such a catastrophic event. Um, so perhaps then the black hole represents our capacity to maybe exercise our social and political imagination in creative but also critical ways because at the end of the day stories that feature you know black holes are never really about black holes themselves but rather they reflect or perhaps reveal something more about the human condition our social environments and our social world you know the representation of the black hole in fiction is often uh, represented as uh, a kind of threat to humanity to civilization to mankind um, it's <clears throat> basically poses as a threat to spacecrafts and to its crew members and you know Frederick Pohl's the gateway it's also the source of what consumes the moon in uh, Paul McGallery's story called uh, How We Lost the Moon it's also the source of what will end up consuming Mars in the whole man and Larry Niven's uh, novel or short story as well and it's actually what will one day destroy Earth in uh, Thomas Wren's Doomsday Effect. And is it okay if I read this part? So I'm just going to read to you uh, the back of the, of the novel to give you a sense of how the black hole is represented in, liter in literary fiction. So it starts with, Doomsday began with a massive California earthquake. Everybody assumed it was the big one that geophysicists had been predicting for years. But odd pieces of evidence came together in the hands of a brilliant group of scientists that pointed to a disaster far more catastrophic, a tiny but real black hole. Now the singularity was looping its way around and through the Earth, and slowly but certainly the planet was being consumed. But how do you stop something that is smaller than an atom, heavier than a mountain, and swallows everything that touches it. So again, it reinforces this idea as the black hole as a threat to civilization, to humankind. Um, and although the black hole in literary fiction, um, or it makes a black holes are featured in short fiction, these stories are never really about the black holes themselves. Rather, the black hole functions as a kind of plot device or a prop to further propel um, the narrative forward. Um, so for example, in uh, Frederick Pohl's uh, Gateway, for example, the story basically is about this man named Rob who struggles to cope with his guilty conscience of having left behind by accident or uh, sacrifice is never really made clear in, in the text. Uh, nine members of his crew in order to save himself from the gravitational pull of the moon. And the story really centers around this single incident. As Rob relates his traumatic experience to a computerized shrink named Siegfried. And in the story, yes, the, the black hole is um, 
the source of Rob's agony and his guilty conscience, but I think the story engages us uh, with more interesting questions that it addresses, and those might be, for example, uh, what is the relationship between humans and machines and artificial intelligence? Uh, what defines humans um, or distinguishes us from computers and programs? And uh, is it our capacity to mourn? Is it our capacity uh, to feel guilt? Does it lie in our ability to make ethically complex and or morally ambiguous decisions? And the text never really provides us with a definitive answer. Uh, rather, it encourages us to um, critically reflect on those if ethical and philosophical uh, and the psychological questions and perhaps the impact of uh, scientific discovery on the psyche, on our social worlds and our social environments.